Uh, we got ourselves a cannabis market again. Let's do the wave, Ed. Your turn. Okay, I'm gonna wave goodbye. <laughs> Come no, on. No, no. Okay, so Boy, what a party pooper. Trust is only up fifty percent or something oh, like that. Oh. <laughs> Why? Did, how come you ever not? How come you ever told me to buy it last week? I. You didn't get. You didn't read the email. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, trust is up. Uh, canopy. Well, it's interesting that trust is up the most because uh, Apri is the one driving the bus with uh, two cents per share in uh, earnings, I believe it was, or something along those lines. I think lines. they said they made, what, 12 or 16 million bucks. <laughs> anyway, Four. so that's not a like nice I number. Didn't, nice number. Nice number. Not like I didn't talk to the, uh, I didn't get it straight from the horse's mouth today. You did? I did. Oh, well, after Irwin the fact. Erwin Simon was here. Yeah, after the fact. After what fact? Well, they announced it. And then well, that was this morning before I even got out of bed. Yeah. No, yeah. I was already out of bed. Here we have coming up today, uh, Laura McCallum's going to be here with the news, of course. Erwin uh, Simon, the uh, temporary CEO or interim CEO of Afria Inc., is here to talk about their earnings report today. And then uh, we're going to launch a uh, coverage of uh, eSports with an interview we did with Daniel Mitre of New Wave eSports. Yeah. And that is coming up a little later this hour. But uh, we also have Steve White coming up this week from Harvest Health and Recreation. We have uh, uh, basically all the rich and famous. Sounds like a real interesting uh, week. It's going to be an interesting week. You know, you know if, they, if they can run tr can trust, I'm just saying. Ruin can trust? If they can run it. Run it. Like from where Into it was, 120 to 180. Hmm. Uh, don't you think they should be able to move Hexo at some point? Into the ground further or? You know, up. Up, because it's it's been it's not even participating today. Yeah, well, you know, Hexo trades on its own universe, really. I mean, it doesn't. You'll notice that Hexo is often trading contrary to whatever the market's doing. I'm not saying good, bad, or ugly. I'm just that's a fact, a pattern that I've noticed. That's Most, the fact, Jack. Well, a fact, a pattern is seldom a fact because it's subjective to some degree whether it conforms to the pattern or whether it's actually anomalous in regards of the, you know, science bullshit. Yeah. Um, anyways, we have uh, Relivium Technology CEO Aurelio Useche is going to be here this week. Uh, Relivium, though you might look at it and sneer, has a very interesting product mix. Uh, I say you might sneer because it's trading around three or four cents, but uh, very interesting conversation. The company's got a business model that I can get right behind. Now, I haven't looked at the capital structure to understand why it's trading up three or four cents. Maybe a lot of shares. Maybe a lot of shares, but the thing I like about Relivium is it's got the, it's got good bones, as they say. It's got like, it's got a solid business plan and model. Uh, the new CEO was not the CEO when it was uh, augering into the ground. He's the new CEO who was formerly an investor who said, hey, wait a sec. Let me step in a bit and shepherd my investment into greener pastures myself. Um, anyways, that conversation is coming up this week. Uh, question, Ed. Now, you're, you're no slouch when it comes to markets. and uh, I like to keep my uh, sort of... Uh Teeny, nose, weeny, my, peeny, my, wet. My nose to the grindstone. Yeah. Is it my nose to the grindstone? Is that the right? That's the polite term. Yeah. Nose to the grindstone. Polite term. Hope it's not Anyways, too, uh, so question for you. Okay. Uh, S&P is up. Dow is up. Cannabis stocks are up. What's down? Gold is down. But that's consistent with what gold's supposed to do. Yeah, when everything gold, is yeah. rosy. It, it, just to show you how rosy they are, J.P. Morgan is at a yearly high today. It was 68 bucks at the low at the end of December. Remember hmm. when the market started? That money laundering shit? machine is actually going higher. It's 120 bucks today. Good God. It's up It's up 50% from the low. Huh. And, and contrast that with what's happening with Deutsche Bank and some of the other international banks. Can you pull up a Deutsche it, Bank chart? Yeah, I, and I am, and I'm going to put it up to uh, J.P. Morgan chart in a bit. Stick it right up, the J.P. Morgan? Here, stick this right up <laughs> to J.P. Morgan. The, <laughs> stick the Deutsche Bank chart right up to J.P. Morgan. Take that. Okay. Jamie. <laughs> Boy, Jamie Diamond. Jamie Diamond. I love how uh, profane we can be. Well, it's not, not profound, although we sometimes 
weighed into the profound as well, wouldn't you say, my old friend? I would say so. Excellent. I would say so. Deutsch and Bank. how was your uh, Thanksgiving weekend, Ed? Well, mm -hmm. you know, not that eventful for me, but... Well, that uh, makes it a good weekend, right? It was a nice weekend. Nice and quiet. I walked mm -hmm. along the uh, Toronto uh, Lakeshore several times. And, nice. And, and, and Did very you see any breezy. Yeah, I saw. Ooh. I saw swans. Swans. Oh, beautiful. You know, interestingly, uh, my partner and I were walking through Tommy Thompson Park here the other day. Yes. And we s came across an entire family of swans, male and female, and like four or five goslings. But the goslings, no, they wouldn't no, be goslings. No, 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 they're cygnets. Cygnets. The little cygnets yeah, were those, almost the oh, size of their parents. Cygnets. <laughs> those little cygnets. Yeah. Anyways, we were speculating on, you know, there's clearly far too many swans in Toronto now. We could take two of them to our rural residence uh, without any... Put it in your pond and call it Swan Lake. Swan River! Woo! Did you ever see Swan Lake? Yeah, the well, famous, The famous uh, ballet? Well, I... No, I haven't actually gone to yeah. see Swan Lake, the ballet, but I, I saw have. the movie about Swan Lake. Oh, yeah. By Aaron Aronofsky. Yeah. And that movie was like, woo, creepy. Well, it's, it's, it's a tough grind to be in a, a ballerina or a, or a, a top da ballet. Yeah, well, they made it seem downright yeah. supernatural. Well, you know, they think they're restricted to like 700, 800 calories a day. Can you, what is it called when you stand on your absolute tiptoes? I don't know. In I ballet? There's a few things. I know there's a Can you do there's that? A, there's a jeet. You, on point. On point. Can you, can you stand on point? Uh, only when the, the point is not so pointy. Oh. So <laughs> you need like, a, like an apple box like, or like something. So, yeah, like a box. Like a, a so crate. you can't actually pirouette and point on your tippy toes. Can you? Absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Bullshit, you can. Yeah. Anyway, can you, can, you throw, can you jump up in the air and, and twirl? Oh, I touch can your kick toes. my heels, rub my nose. They're amazing athletes. Tummy. Amazing athletes. Well, they're dancers. They're artists. They're not athletes. Well, they're they're athletes. Really? Oh. You know, most artists had an athletic component bent. to their lives. Bent. Bent. Well, not bent per se, because bent implies innate talent, right? Sometimes um, necessity being the mother of invention. Yeah. Uh, athleticism becomes just an event that wanders into one's daily rhythm once in a while. Running away, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this has gotten way off oh, track. Yeah, here's, here's Laura McCallum okay. with some news. Here's what's making cannabis headlines this Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. Appier reported its results for its first quarter ended August 31st, 2019. Net revenue was $126.1 million in the first quarter, an increase of 849% from prior year quarter, and decrease of 2% from prior quarter. Net income was $16.4 million, and adjusted EBITDA was $1 million in the first quarter. Cash and cash equivalents at the end of the quarter was $449.2 million. Origin Host announced that by amalgamation of Tricome Financial and 22 Capital, it has acquired 5.77 million common shares of the amalgamated Tricome Financial. This represents approximately 23% of the issued and outstanding common shares of Tricome Financial. The acquisition occurred by operation of law in connection with the amalgamation. Cantrust Holdings announced that it continues to make progress on its commitment to take the actions required to bring the company into full regulatory compliance and seek the full reinstatement of its licenses. The company will provide Health Canada with an outline of its proposed remediation strategy by October 21st. Cantrust Board of Directors has determined that it is necessary to destroy approximately $12 million of biological assets and approximately $65 million worth of inventory that was not authorized by Cantrust license. Canopy Growth Corporation has sold its 42 million shares in Australian cannabis company Oscan Group Holdings via an off-market block trade of 15 cents per share for gross proceeds of 6.3 million. The sale represents Canopy Growth's total 13.2 interest in OSCAN. Canopy Growth Corporation has also closed the previously announced acquisition of all outstanding shares in the global cannabinoid-based research company Beckley Canopy Therapeutics. These teams will now be integrated into the broader Spectrum Therapeutics organization to increase the breadth of the clinical research being pursued under the Spectrum banner and to combine continental, European and United Kingdom commercial terms. 
Emerald Health Therapeutics has received its cultivation license amendment and has full municipal permitting for its first of two 78,000 square foot greenhouses at its organic Metro Vancouver site from Health Canada. With an additional 50,000 square feet and seven grow areas licensed for cultivation related activities, Emerald can now begin commercial greenhouse production at this site. Planting will begin immediately and it is expected to be completed by the end of Q4 with the first harvest planned for January 2020. Indiva Limited has entered into definitive documentation with an institutional lender in respect of $7.5 million secured bridge loan and facility and a $6.5 million secured demand loan facility for aggregate debt financing in an amount of up to $11 million. The proceeds under the facility are expected to be used for repayment of an outstanding convertible debenture and related interest in Divas facility expansion, capital purchases of extraction and encapsulation equipment, as well as bulk biomass purchases and general working capital. James E. Wagner Cultivation received an additional license amendment from Health Canada approving the production of cannabis in four new flowering rooms at its flagship facility. Once fully operational, the new flowering rooms will double the current license production capacity of JWC2 from 22,000 square feet to approximately 44,500 square feet. Namaste Technologies announced that its wholly owned subsidiary, Canmar Inc., has received approval from Health Canada for an amendment to its license. The license allows it to offer cannabis oil concentrates on its online marketplace. Slang Worldwide has entered into a strategic partnership with Cookies, a California-based cannabis and lifestyle brand, to bring Cookies products to the Colorado market. Slang has signed an exclusive licensing and distribution agreement in connection with the proposed sale of pre-packaged flower products and concentrates for the Colorado market. Sugarbud Craft Growers has entered into a strategic supply and contract manufacturing agreement with Heritage Cannabis Holdings. Sugarbud will supply Heritage with a minimum of 10 thousand grams of premium dried cannabis per month for an initial term of 24 months commencing May 1, 2020, and Heritage will provide extraction, formulation, and production services. And that's your news for today. To keep up to date on all things cannabis, visit The Cannabis Daily on MidasLetter.com. That was a lot of news. Today was what we would call a news-heavy day. Well, you know what? There's, we, we, we had the carryover from yesterday. Carryover? Being Thanksgiving, a lot of news. I wonder how that works for, for uh, news? American cannabis companies trading on the Canadian exchanges. Do their like shareholders all go into panic mode when it's Canadian Thanksgiving? They're like, it's not trading. No, you know, often like if it's interlisted, it, it's trading over there, and it's got to move the, the that all that move on the first trade. So here. really, a smart investor would see what's going on in the U.S. and basically, the, the next day's open in Tor in Toronto is a sort of a painted picture well they know what it is already like it's going to open where theoretically well it's going to oh. open where the other one opens so can you buy share shares in the aftermarket can you buy shares in the aftermarket if i have it i have it set up yeah really do you have it set up i could probably buy shares can you oh you, know, you could probably buy shares you're yeah. not sure yeah i could <laughs> you're, you're sure well, I, I i i did a trade yesterday no yeah in the states really of course. With what? Money. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Uh, money. <laughs> amazing. I got money. That's what I want. Okay, so let's take a look at Afria's uh, financials here. And uh, we are duly impressed okay. because uh, earnings per share, sorry, is not two cents, but seven cents per share. And this is why. Uh, the company traded the earth. The consensus was that it was going to be two cents per share. So that's why Afria is trading so hard to the upside is because they blew consensus out of the water by a multiple. And um, this is their second profitable quarter, Ed. And um, this is what this is what people that invest in cannabis stocks want to see now. They want right. to see, you know. They want to see, yeah, they want to see cash flow. They want to see. Dee, 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 there's a, there's dee, dee, dee. the uh, six-month chart. Show me money. On Afria, right here. All there right. you go, okay. Whoa, look at that. Let's focus on that last little bit. That's some good news. And, and, and yeah, the, look at, that was a big, big fall there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, that's, uh, that's only from the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, just over a month. Mm -hmm. Then we had the big drop. You know, nothing happened Friday on, on this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that somebody, look at it, it was a, a green candle on Friday, and here it is Tuesday gapped up. Yeah. Right back to this level in here. Wow. So, 
Look, it's still down, but yeah. I mean, it, it, could this grind and higher by another dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars a share? I think so. Look at uh, your little picture there, eh? My little picture. You look cute there. Cute. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at that. <laughs> Anyways, a uh, quick shout out to our uh, fans, our, our friends in the control room. I just wanted to say thank you to Alex and Laura and Tracy and Donald, the man. Oh. Donald. Do Not Donald. Donald. You say Donald? I say no, Donald. No, 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 no. The, I was corrected. You don't say Donald. You say Donald. Donald. I always say Donald. Don't I? Don't See, I said it again. Don't, don't you say it? Don't I? Let's have a big round of applause for the people in the control room, eh? Come on. Put that camera on in there. What's the matter with you folks? You sh oh, it's not working. Hey. Anyways, okay, so you can just imagine what they look like. Don always like five million pounds. He's got a beak growing out of the side of his head. And... Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. A turkey we'll beak? We'll describe the other uh, control room denizens soon. But you remember the gimp? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Did you say limp? No, I didn't say that. You said gimp. Yeah, gimp. Oh, okay. Jeez, Ed. We're trying to keep a clean show here. Clean show. Clean show. Uh, anyway, so among the other many things that I wanted to do today was uh, let's take a look at the cannabis indexes because why? because they're giving me a stiffy, damn it. They're beautiful. Green, 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 as far as y'all can see. Look <laughs> at that. Large cap index up 4.34% to 6667. See the 666 in there, coincidence? I don't think so. Small cap cannabis index is up 4.85% or 31 points to 671.29. Midas letter venture Cannabis index up 3.94%. CSE index up 2.91%. So, this is what you might call, this could be... This could be the beginning of a run. And here we are in October, and what's the anniversary date Come, that's coming up? Halloween, All Saints Day, Edibles Day, the day it went legal yeah. recreationally. Yeah. It's, we're getting close to the one-year anniversary, aren't we? We are getting very close to the one-year anniversary. Three more days? Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. Sorry? Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. The, uh, the anniversary You've got a big anniversary going on right now, is one you? day after my 10-year anniversary, domestically speaking, of course. What about your, uh, your anniversary of... Uh, Quitting, of, uh, smoking, drinking. Prohibition. Philandering. Self-imposed prohibition. Masturbate. Oops, no, I haven't quit that. Uh... What? No. Uh, oh, jeez. Yes, this is day 57. No. Sunday. Nope, sorry, day 58. Day 58. Yeah, you, you passed me. My record's 54 or 55. Woo! High fives. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so who's next? Who's in my crosshairs now? I think you got to go off your PC. PC. He's going down. PC's up Mind there. Mind you, I do have a few months to put in to catch his yeah, he's, record. Yeah, he's at an eight, nine month. Uh, We're talking about the record here for days without drinking alcohol. Yeah, I've just done 60 days for the first time in my life. It's the first time I've been sober, essentially, in 40 years. How do you feel about that? I feel like I need a drink. No, just kidding. I, feel like, I don't feel like I need a drink. Interestingly enough, the thing that I think that the change, the main factor here in me quitting is cannabis consumption. Since I started doing CBD every day, like I started doing CBD every day probably what, back in February or March? Probably 20 years ago. No, 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 no. No, I mean CBD, ah. just the extract without the heavy THC. Right. And about, so what then what was by August, now I'm thinking, I don't need, what am I drinking? Like, I don't need to drink, I don't need to smoke. I have no, like I have none of the withdrawal like where it's like you got the DTs because you feel like, holy fuck, I've been three days in my water drink. None of that. I just don't have any urge to smoke or drink. None. Like none. Like even I walk by somebody smoking on the street, I'm like, ugh, shit will kill you, man. Yeah, well, it will. Yeah, well, maybe. Most things will kill you. Well, I had a relative who was killed by tobacco, but not from smoking. And he... Uh Mm. He turned around to a stranger in a crosswalk to ask for a light, 
and a bus came by and clocked him on the back of the head and killed him. Caved in his head. What, killed what by the, smoking, killed by tobacco, he, but not by the smoking. The bus, like the mirror of the, the bus? The mirror of the bus smashed him in the head. I've often thought about that, you know, as I stand there and I <laughs> see <laughs> these things going by, I'm thinking, you know, if I was a few more inches over, yeah, and sometimes they're too, you know, they, they may, they're not perfect, right? right? They're not sitting there in a, in a... It's run by a human being. Yeah, or, or you know what's the, the terrible thing is when a bicyclist is moving along with, tra and, and, you know, between the parked cars mm -hmm. and the traffic, mm -hmm. and somebody in a car opens the door just as they're right there, and they come crashing into, yeah. this happens all the oh, time. I've seen it happen and, a few and times. And that can be extremely debilitating. Like, like yeah. that can put you in the hospital. Well, a friend of mine traction. was in the hospital in traction Because oh, they're, you know, that. bikers are. Moving quickly. Usually they are. They're not lollygagging like. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, and that's I like usually, to, I'm a walker. I like to walk. I'm a biker. I, I like to bike. And I, I like to but walk. I've learned from walking a lot. Don't make sudden moves left or right. Donal? Donal makes subtle moves left or Donal. right. <laughs> Donal. Donal make, Donal make. Anyways, uh, we've been talking about uh, Afria's uh, Knock It Out of the Park. Fabulous quarter, $35 million in revenue, seven cents a share in earnings. Let's talk to the man himself. Erwin Simon joins me now. <laughs> Afria Interim CEO, Erwin Simon joins me now. Erwin, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. It's great to finally have you here. Um, Erwin, you guys put out a great press release. Congratulations on those earnings. Let's talk about them. What is the, give me an overview of, of what the picture looks like. So as we announced today, number one, our you know, rec cannabis sales are up 8%. Our overall sales are up 400% versus a year ago. Um, you know, with that, uh, our profitability is four times what it was last quarter. Um, we're profitable here in Canada with our Canadian rec sales. We're profitable, you know, with the total company. Um, we have over 600,000 plants in a free of one. Mm -hmm. um, Health Canada on Friday told us they were expediting our license in regards to our free of diamond facility. When those two come on stream, we will have, you know, two and a half million square feet of growing space. We'll have 265,000 kilos of ability to grow. We've grown share in our Soleil product line, our Broken Coast, um, which we had a small fire that caused a little bit of a hiccup, but our Broken Coast is, you know, one of the most consumed products or demand products in here in Canada. Um, you know, we have our licenses in Germany. We're building out our um, facilities in Latin America, in Colombia. So a lot of things going right. There's a lot of things going right. And listen, it's been a tough, you know, six months prior to that with Afria, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of things heading in the right direction. Sure, I don't want to dwell on that, but in the interest of credibility, if I don't ask you some tougher questions, absolutely, I'll be shot down and crucified you by should. the social media. So, what most people want to know is, you know, there were there were some questions about how certain transactions were done within the organization, which resulted in management changes. So, without asking any questions to lead or imply anything, can you tell me how? everything has improved on the governance side overall. So number one is, you know, in regards to um, the governance, the board has changed, the leadership at the top has changed in regards to myself um, as chairman and interim CEO. Listen, I ran a public company in the US or around the world, in which I was the founder for 25 years. I'm big on process, I'm big on corporate governance. Um, there are you know, new board members joined our board already. There's an additional board member that will be joining our board at our AGM. Um, in regards to disclosures, you know, any conflict of interest, um, every meeting, um, we bring that up. Um, in regards to, you know, any acquisitions in reg you know, regards to that, if there's any investments or conflicts. So th th there is put in place by the special committee that was, you know, there at that time, um, tremendous amount of process in that that we would go through. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's it's not that we should have to go through a list. There just should be good corporate governance every single day of the week in a public company. You know, we trade in on, you know, New York Stock Exchange, we trade here in Toronto. So basically there's rules to follow and, you know, I know the importance of that. If investors are invested in our product, 
they should have good governance and, and uh, they should be getting the responsibility that uh, the company is. The same thing when a consumer buys our product. If they're paying for our product, they should know they're getting a quality product that's gone through strict regulations and gone through process. And that should be the same thing with our shareholders. Fantastic. Um, okay, so you're obviously scaling into a, a market that is, is going to grow uh, probably with the advent of Cannabis 2.0. But the, the scale at which capacity is growing out is, I mean, and I recall from earlier that a free was very cost conscious about cost per gram of production over time and and I'm curious as to how that's ramping up with these larger scales are you still uh, targeting lower or prioritizing rather low cost of production and is that a realistically attainable goal in this new big scale up anytime soon so first of all quality is number one and putting out the best quality products out there that consumers want and that's you know our number one priority Number two is, listen, anybody that comes out and says, we're going to be a low cost producer and that's what we're gonna focus on. You know, every company that I've been involved in, we always wanna be a smart, strategic, low cost producer. And that is something that we want to be just from everyday course of the business. It's not that here's the strategic plan, we're not gonna be, we're gonna be a branded consumer products company, number one. We're gonna put out quality products. We're gonna follow the strict regulations of the Health Canada. And by the way, we are going to be a low cost producer. And that's gonna come from good grow. That's gonna come from our processing, which is automated out there, getting our yields out there. It's gonna come from the way we ship our products today and how many different handling is in place. And that's what's gonna you know, allow us to be that low cost producer. There's not one simple special sauce out there that you drink that says, we're the low cost producer because we drank this sauce. Mm -hmm. It's an integrated program. It also comes back today too from an integrated sales and marketing program. How are we spending the money with our retailers? And what is the benefit and what are we getting for it? And last but not least, how are we marketing our brands? You know, there's a lot of regulations in the way you market your brands here and what you can spend on advertising. So how are you building awareness to the consumer? How are you getting to know your brands? And when they come into a retailer, how are they buying your brand? So that is, again, as you bring them all together, mm -hmm. how do you become that low cost producer? All right. Um, is Safria still more or less focused on uh, greenhouse growing as opposed to enclosed structures? Listen, we've invested in greenhouse growing. We've invested right. a lot of money, so that's where the focus got to be now and how we perfect that. As I said, you know, we will have 2.5, 2.6 million square feet of greenhouse growing um, in Leamington, Ontario. And with that, again, how do we get the yields? How do we get the perfection out of that? Um, you know, listen, I've seen different types of growing. Um, so far, you know, no one out there has ever grown cannabis in 2.6 million square feet, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a, still a lot of learning curves to do. It's the lighting, it's the, you know, irrigation systems, it's the yields, how you're treating the plants, etc. We've come a long way. In Afria 1, there's 600,000 plants that was there by the end of July. Incredible. And now we have to, you know, get Afria Diamond uh, full once we get our license there. But we're there. Uh, greenhouse is where we are, mm -hmm. and greenhouse is where we're committed to for now. Great. Um, what about the international strategy? How's that evolving? You know, the international strategy is evolving well. You got to remember, you know, internationally, I mean, other than Uruguay and Luxembourg, you know, ultimately, they're the only countries that have somewhat of, you know, rec that is legal. The rest is medical cannabis. So, you know, I see opportunities in Latin America. There's 650 million people living there. Um, I've spent time both in Colombia, I've spent time both in Argentina, and the opportunities working with the medical professions, working with drug companies there is, is tremendous. So I'm pretty excited about that. You know, I was in Buenos Aires two weeks ago and working with a hospital there that we work with and seeing the testing and the results with CBD in in toddlers and kids mm -hmm. in epilepsy and, and actually supplying epilep supplying CBD to a, um, a, a child ourselves that we're working with in the UK. And what we've seen where they would have over 300 seizures a day, either down to none or only having a few. So there's tremendous amount of research coming out in regards to the benefits of cannabis with anxiety, with epilepsy, with pain, uh, would sleep, etc. And that's what I'm excited about is the opportunity for us around the world 
mm -hmm. in regards to the use of medical cannabis. Um, the big opportunity for us is, you know, becoming GMP certified out of our Leamington facility and being able to ship that internationally, big opportunity. We're today investing 40 plus million dollars in Colombia in regards to building a greenhouse there. We're investing in Germany and spending $40 million in building out a facility there to supply the German market from a medical aspect. So um, we're investing and we're also investing in our Leamington facility to be able to supply GMP certified product okay. to other countries around the world. Great. Um, okay. Are you able to give us any guidance on what the uh, rest of the year looks like financially? Listen, as we come back and said, we have stuck to guidance and I think that was important. Um, you know, feeling good about getting our license at Diamond was important for us. But I think the big thing is what I've come out and said and what the company has said is this here. By the end of calendar year 2020, we'll be on a run rate to do $1 billion of sales in Canada. One billion, that's billion would it be, okay? And I think that's important. The big thing is, is this here. It's not that we have to go out there and create a market. There's a $5 billion market out there. It's how we convert the illicit market over to the rec market and buying through retail stores. So how do we grow? Number one, more and more stores are gonna open in Canada. I'd say within the next two to three years, there will be 3,000 stores or more. Converting the, the illicit market over to the rec market. And that's where you gotta gain the confidence you know, of consumers letting them know what's safe, letting them know about brands. And, you know, last but not least, price will be important, okay? Mm -hmm. The other thing is what you're gonna find in, you know, the rec market and, and from brands, you're gonna find different products in regards to whether it's vapes, whether it's edibles, and whether it's drinks. So there's a big market out there. It's just how do you take share away from it and how do you pull the consumer out of the illicit market? Um, listen, I think there's over 200 LPs today in, in regards to the Canadian market. I think. There's a lot of challenges. Raising money today, as I said on my call this morning, cash is king. Mm -hmm. And we have you know, over $465 million of cash. I think some of them will run out of money and they'll go away. As you heard today, CanTrust having to you know, burn 77, $77 million worth of cannabis. I mean, that was in the marketplace before, so we're all picking that up. Right. So there's gonna be a shuffling out of the market. And I think, you know, listen, I think the big thing is this here. This industry's only really been around one year on the wreck, and it's had its stops and starts, had some great things go on, had some good things, and it had some challenges out there. Mm -hmm. You bet, Erwin. All right, we'll leave it there for now. That's a great contribution. Thanks very much for joining me Thank today. Thank you very much for having me. If you're enjoying the show, subscribe to Midas Letter on YouTube so you stay up to date on everything investment. That, if he's saying that, but... Eight times what he's doing. Now, just a quick note that we are, Back. he said that he's going to have a run rate of $1 billion in At 2020. At the end of calendar 2020. Right. So that means to be com consistent with the definition of run rate, yeah. which is basically your best quarter times four. He's going to be doing a quarter billion revenue. So basically all he has to do to meet that number is have one quarter in 2020 that is $250 million in revenue. Well, except, except, except that if, if that, that quarter was the second quarter, then the run rate would start to drop if he, if he, in other words, it's the last quarter that counts. So is he basically predicting $250 million in revenue for the last quarter of 2020? Something like that. I think we got to get him back here for another conversation. I think that's what, he, that's the, that's what that means. But he, they don't have to do a billion dollars of revenue that year. They have to have a run rate. So theoretically, that last quarter, Yeah. Four times that quarter, yeah. or let's say the month. The month should be eighty million dollars, because twelve times eighty yeah, would yeah, be yeah. nine. You know, that's that's sort of what what he's saying. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. And and if the if the, if he if he comes out with a great quarter in April and May's the same and June's the same and then July it starts to drop, then the run rate's starting to drop. Right. And that's but, what's happened to Axel. So it was basically a uh, couched way to project revenue yeah he, he, he's giving you he's saying we've got lots going on and when we get there which we're getting there well you know we, we, you know what but this that is such a big big I mean that's great I, I 
Nothing the industry needs more than a company to deliver a billion dollars in revenue. So, so what, what he said about the fact that they had to burn uh, can trust inventory, can trust yeah. estimate. So does that inventory, like that, there's cannabis there now that's no longer there. Yeah. It's gotta be made up by somebody else now, right? right? 70 million kilograms, was it? I can't remember what the, kilograms? I can't remember. All I know pounds? is that it's interesting that can trust, well, but can trust is up substantially today too. Maybe because they burned all that weed. Maybe they're high. So would you say that CanTrust is now trading on the value of its infrastructure? I don't know. Because uh, they I had that big, they have all that processing and pill packaging and machinery up in Vaughan that we've seen. We've been down to Niagara and they certainly have a big spread down there. That's got to be worth $200 million to another LP to just step in I and know, but can, That money though... That money will never get to anybody that's involved with can trust. I gotta believe because it, they're going to get sued to death. Yeah, but that's just it. So in receivership, can trust will sell those assets. Yes. And the bidders will all be LPs. Right. Because what else are you going to do with that? Grow expensive tomatoes, cucumbers, and well, you should be able to buy. Yeah, those assets at a reasonable price. Like somebody's going to be interested in those assets yeah. for sure. Well, that's my point. Yeah. So when people are saying, "Well, why is can trust making the big bounce?" A, because the general Momentum to the upside has triggered all kinds of short covering. Yeah. And B, it deserves to trade at the value of its assets in a bankruptcy sale. But I don't see how, and, and there's, some, there's some sort of sentiment out there that CanTrust is going to, <clears throat> well, here's the, uh, the news release on October 15th which is today, CanTrust advances its plan towards regulatory compliance. So I would think measures to improve key personnel's knowledge of and compliance with the provisions of the act. Uh, so let's see here. Is necessary to destroy $12 million in biological assets and $65 million worth of inventory that was not authorized. So $12 million in biological assets, bunch of plants. Plants that they've grown. Well, we don't know. So are they worth 12 which million? Plants. Or yeah. It could be 20,000 clones, or it could be 500 mature plants. We don't know. But is that the cost of the, of the, uh, of the, of the, of the heart? You know, when you, when you put, the, put the seeds in, they're worth X. When you take them, when you harvest, harvest. it, it's worth a lot more. Yeah, but the biological assets accounting that has been adopted by most of the LPs right. is incremental. In other words, if the plant is half grown, right. when they account for it, right. then it is accounted right. for right. at 50% right. of the sale price. If it's full grown, it's accounted at full sale price. If it's a seed, it's accounted for at the seed price. So this is the thing I'm saying is that at 12 million bucks, uh, y y unless there's more color on that, we don't know whether that's actual mature sure. inventory or just early stage plants. Not really pertinent, but they're also destroying $65 million worth of inventory that was not authorized by CanTrust license. So there's a new CEO in town, surprise, surprise, uh, Robert Markovich, and uh, he says, we have made significant progress in these efforts. Our goal is to meet and exceed Health Canada's regulatory standard and to rebuild the trust and confidence of our primary regulator, investors, patients, and customers. So, do we stand corrected? Is it conceivable that CanTrust can actually emerge from this uh, relatively unscathed? I, 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 I can't imagine. I can't I, imagine I, either. I can't imagine. And what, what really worries me, if I was an investor, this is just my years of experience following things. The fact that they went down to the US with Bank America, I believe, mm -hmm. and went around and raised all that money mm -hmm. while they were doing uh, things that Health Canada deemed to be illegal. Right. So, you know, I'm not saying they're illegal, but they're illegal in Health Canada's eyes. Right. And so slapped with, you know, whatever the, those things are called. Uh, sanctions. Sanctions, that's the word. Yeah, I, look, it's 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 what one man's meat's another man's poison, right? <laughs> like, what's good for the goose ain't so good for the gander sometimes. That's true, eh? I don't know. I don't know. Either. I I I, I gotta tell you though, growing it, like we've talked about this on and off the camera, growing yes. big quantities of marijuana, I think, is harder than it looks. 
Like, I just don't think you can grow it. Let it grow wild. I mean, you can grow a few plants wild. Right. Um, the eSports phenomenon, switching horses here. Yes, I know it's a cannabis day, but we are starting an, a channel uh, covering the eSports phenomenon because we think that eSports is about to explode as, a, as an investment category, uh, as evidenced by the launch by Apple and Google of eSports platforms. Apple launched Arcade last week and Google launched Stadia. And uh, that combined with some, uh, some other things have caused us to create a show called The Midas Letter, New Wave Esports Investor Update. And here is our inaugural conversation with the host of the hour, Daniel Mitre. Game begin. I'm here now with Daniel Mitri. He's the CEO and founder of New Wave Esports. Daniel, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, Daniel, esports is on the rise, to say the least, and we've seen Apple and now Google launch esports services on their platforms. How do investors play esports and make money? Investors can play esports and make money. I mean, look, esports is accessible to everybody. Uh, esports, by definition, is a, is a video game played uh, competitively. And then you have all the support services around that. So it's really competitive gaming, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and every game has a competitive sort of element to it. Uh, but what makes it an esports viable product? Uh, and that's up to the community to dictate, hey, I want to play this in an esports fashion. And then, you know, you kind of have the traditional model of, uh, of sports. Anybody can play baseball in, in your backyard, but what makes it a professional sport? Well, that's all the companies that come together to monetize on that experience, create great experiences for uh, their, their consumers or sports players. We're adopting the same thing in eSports. Mm -hmm. So it's taking competitive gaming that you can play in your backyard uh, and bringing in companies that really start to create great experiences around the competitive nature of that. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the professional athletes come into play. Uh, and then on the second part of your question there, how do investors make money in it? Uh, look, esports is on the rise here in North America, but esports has been very uh, a mature market in Asia and Europe. We're taking a lot of cues from there. Mm -hmm. So it's getting in at the ground level now. I like to compare esports to what cannabis was five years ago. Mm. So we're at the ground level. Invest early because we're building the foundation here. It's kind of a, a blank page, right? You know, and we're we're setting the standard of how you operate within esports here in North America, which sends wakes globally. Right. How does New Wave Esports? What is your business model? So New Wave Esports is an investment and acquisition uh, company. Uh, we take working capital and we place that into early and mid stage companies. So hmm. uh, we. Actually actually bring the finances and build the companies that build the foundation of esports that create those experiences that I was telling you about where gamers latch on to and create amazing lifestyles and lifestyle experiences. Wow, interesting. Um, so at this point there are some publicly traded opportunities to invest in for investors, but it's not got the depth that the cannabis industry has, for example, although, as you say, we're at the earliest stage. Are we looking at a timeline that's going to gradually fill with all these different opportunities, which, if it was to follow, the cannabis industry would deteriorate in quality with the age of the sector? Uh, I think what, what you're seeing now is some big players starting to come out of the space. Uh, you know, you have guys like the Immortal Gaming Club, you have Cloud9, these are major teams that have established great business practices around establishing uh, uh, professional players who come in and they compete at a national or global level. Hmm. But they also operate businesses that are green, that ultimately are optimized. So not only do they have pro teams competing, but they have content programming, which is very important in any team. 
this is the this is the filler gap between the tent poles of tournaments in which you go out and compete. Right. Uh, and so, you know, your previous question, how do you make money in esports? Well, teams is one of those verticals in which you can make money. But it starts with content programming that you sell to sponsorship. You spill ad, uh, ad dollars. Sponsorship makes up to sixty to seventy percent of a lot of teams' revenue. So, a sponsorship like a corporate sponsor wants to get their brand aligned with a team because they're trying to access that millennial or l younger audience. Yeah, the millennial and Gen Z, which is a hyper-engaged audience. Hmm. We're talking audiences that uh, that consume esports on multiple devices at uh, you know simultaneously, that also play the game, that also has indisposable money to spend money on things that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And gaming, hardware, those experiences are things that are motivating them to purchase. Uh, so, you know, responsible teams are number one, creating the nucleus of content programming, and then around that is the rest of the support services, the teams, uh, you know, uh, all the venues in which they operate or uh, different conventions that they host. So I guess one of the ways investors can uh, participate is to invest in teams that are competing for big prize purses in specific game environments? Yeah. So investors certainly can get involved in esports in that vertical. That's one of four verticals that New Wave actually invests in. Hmm. Teams is very important. Uh, teams are making the big headlines. Teams are great media exposure. But if you're investing in teams just to win prize purses, you may want to hedge your bets and actually invest in teams that look at uh, the holistic business of esports. You know, there's a lot that goes into to winning a tournament. Uh, you know, a game may be hot one year, it may not be the next year. And there may be a big game update that completely changes the way uh, athletes strategize and, mm -hmm. and play the game. Uh, so that's why, in, you know, the, the previous uh, top uh, point there that it's all about content programming that uh, sells 60 to 70 percent of sponsorship and then you lean into your prize winnings. Sure. How is it that esports and e-gaming, why is it taken until now, until it's sort of exploding onto a global sort of consciousness? Why is it taken, like, I mean, I remember e uh, Electronic Arts was building video games back in the 90s. Why didn't esports take off then? I think there's a lot of catalysts that had to happen in order to see esports the way we see it now. You know, esports has been running in Asia for 20 years. Mm. You know, they started with StarCraft. It was televised in pubs. Like that's that's a mainstay. That's something that is is very much permanent to the culture over there. Mm. In Europe, they you know they've been I want to say a good 10 years ahead of us, and they've got a great collegiate scene out there. But why is esports now taking off at a global level? Well, you have great internet speeds now that reduce latency. You have the big transformation from physical to digital products, so it's now accessible to more people worldwide. You have people on multiple devices. Like you could play a great quality game on your on your phone now, mm -hmm. th especially thanks to Apple Arcade. And you have Google Stadia that's coming in and making gaming more accessible for, for more people. So gaming is now a mass audience affair, whereas you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was more kind of the, the nerdy thing that you do uh, in your basement, sure. uh, so to speak. Uh, but it's more accessible to everybody. There's a lot of different technological yeah. catalysts that mm -hmm. has helped bring esports to the global front. Okay, so what level of capital investment is coming to the esports area from investors in, say, 2020? So what we're seeing is a, a lot of investors have made their killing in cannabis mining, and a lot of their financial analysts are saying, "Hey, esports is the next big thing," uh, and a lot of them don't know much about esports. Uh, so there's a lot of great money coming in into the space as they educate themselves on the potential here. And I think what a lot of investors are starting to find is that they're at the ground level. It's kind of a blank page. Uh, and so you need to invest early on the teams that understand, or, or the companies that understand the long term here. Mm -hmm. And this is this is a long term play. Uh, this isn't just a quick cash grab. So we're we're building the foundation of esports. So what kind of capital is coming in? Uh, we're we're seeing millions of dollars come in. You know, New Wave Esports itself has raised several million dollars uh, just on the promise that we're building esports, we're building organizations, and we're building uh, a collaborative experience between the different verticals in esports. We'll leave it there for now, Dan. Daniel, thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. Every other week, we're going to cover what's the latest and greatest uh, events and companies to look at in the esports realm right here on Midas Letter with New Wave Esports, Daniel Mitre as our co-host. So join us. Thanks for joining us today. If you like the show, you'll love our website. Visit us at www.midasletter.com for interviews with key CEOs, cannabis news, and to subscribe to our newsletter. 
Uh, mia culpa. I just wanted to go back for one second to that conversation we had about a Freya. Uh, I was in error on top line revenue. I was only looking at the cannabis sales revenue, 35 million total revenue for the quarter was 127 as I would like to now confirm. And so it's not that much of a stretch for them to get to a billion dollar run rate from here. It's a, it's a double run it's rate. It's a double. It's like they just did 125 and he's saying for the last quarter of next year, calendar year, you could be 250. So if he's, this quarter ended what? The one they just reported, was this a May, uh, not a May, a, 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 a July? June 30th, wasn't June it? June 30th. Now again, wait a sec, let me confirm that before I go off half cocked ya. Uh, let's see where it goes, the money, money running. Uh, three months ended August 31st. August 31st. Mm -hmm. So you've got the sep September, you got, you got about five quarters and then that last quarter they, they expect to be running at about two, double. Because four times, whatever that quarter is going to be, the last quarter of the, of the calendar year. So um, if they reported revenue, uh, well let's say they get to a billion dollar run rate by Q4 and let's assume that they stay on that run rate at least for Q1 and they report a billion dollars in revenue for Q1 2021 and let's say that the same multiple applies to their net income then that's seven cents so that would be 14 cents per quarter 28 56 cents per share uh, that would be quite respectable yeah that would work for you well Look, look, the stock's up a buck today, basically. Yeah. And, and you know, on a, a technically, it looks to me like it's got to do some work around here before it can go higher. But yeah, it, it just may. I mean, if management can, this guy looks like a, a seasoned uh, CEO. He's been around. He's, he's worked in the U.S. He seems to have, you know, certainly much more going for him than just a passion for marijuana. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, he's, he seems like a seasoned businessman. So... You know, it may, maybe this is a, the bottom for, for uh, Afria for a while. Could be. But I think, you know, we've got to, you've got to start looking at companies one by one. You, you can't just... Lump them all together. No, no lumpy. No lumping. lumping. No lumping. No parking. No, no dumping. No dumping. No lumping. No lumping. What about bumping? Bumping is okay. What about pumping? Pumping? Not around here, okay. mister. There'll be no pumper doodles around here. What do they call it? A, a sump pump. Why is it called a sump pump? Sump pump. The sump pump is so called because it pumps from a sump. Oh. Do you know what a sump is? No. You don't? Well, I think I do now. Must well, that means I can make up anything. It must and you're be just a, have a square in the concrete. Not necessarily a square. A rectangle? Could be. Circular? Could be. Ovular? Do you, do you know why manhole covers are round? And there's two reasons. Mm, I'm afraid to say why. Manhole covers are round. No, why? You want to know why? Well, that's why I said why twice now. Okay. Well, if they were square, there's a possibility that the mail cover could go down the square, you know, depending on how you angled it. Uh -huh. Second thing is when you're trying to move a mail cover, you can just roll it if it's round. Hmm. Is that true? Well, think about it. Well, what would you rather do, carry, drag a metal cover or roll it? Okay, okay. Let's just say it. I'm looking at the uh, cannabis large cap index here. Uh, all companies over $500 million in market cap. Uh, and we're seeing good recovery numbers here across the board in the large caps. T-God's even up 11.76% to $1.33. Uh, most notably here, Afria has tacked on 16.26%, up a dollar, trating at $7.22. Uh, sure would be nice among cannabis players to say, despite all the ones who have added to the downdraft, to be the one to say, we turned the tide, and it was when we put out our earnings that the market reversed and went the other way. Uh, Kronos Group added 5.69% so far today, up to 59 cents to 10.96. Cureleaf is up 3.69%. Aurora Cannabis is up 2.47%. Uh, Hexo. Now, Hexo, as Ed pointed out earlier, is not necessarily not participating. It is up 3 cents or 0.9%. But among all of the gainers, uh, 
Yep. Uh, it is among the lowest because only Green Thumb is worse. Village Farms actually lost 3.8%. How today. low did uh, Hexo get? I, I think it was around 334. How low? Because if it was way go. down in a rally, that would be that would constitute oh, a pretty bullish candle. Let's zoom in here. Uh, this is actually today the lowest that Hexo has ever been. Really? Yes. H See the candle up there? What do you make of that candle, Ed? That's that's a bullish candle, and I know that. All these these last three candles are all below the band. This is extremely oversold. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put up a chart here of Hexo because I'm thinking I may want to go long here today. Really? Go yeah, long Hexo? Yeah, I think so. As a trade? As a trade. How long a trade? Well, if, if, it, if it jumped 10% tomorrow, I would be out. Hmm. But 10%. Real, uh, real long-term supporter there, are you? Yep. That's almost 24 hours. Wow. Probably wouldn't wait till the end of the day either, would you? No. <laughs> Probably do it right on the open, wouldn't you? It, you know, it I, it, it, I, I'm going to say right now to the viewers, if you've if you're sitting with some, you know, I think Hecko's Hecko, is there an echo in here? I think Hexo is is ready for a bit of a move, and I would say it should go to at least up a dollar. Really? In this move, that's my. So you Ten think cents. that Hexo's participation in this market-wide exuberance is just temporarily delayed? It's traded eight million shares today. Yeah. Well, it, and the, the 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 problem with this when there's new news, like if you look at that, that's the recent chart. That's only a, like a two day, from the tenth to the fifteenth. That's mm -hmm. like maybe a few days. Yeah, two days, and then it broke that trend here. And then we got uh, we got a little tic tac toe game going here, but now it's flattening out a bit. That's a little less steep that move. It, it could roll up, and there's a nice big gap here. And this this has been decimated. It's so oversold. This is probably something I'd like to step into. And you'd say, well, why would this move? The results were so shitty. Why is Cantrust moving? I mean, there's a lot more red hair or red hair, <laughs> hair, <laughs> any kind of hair. Okay, just Get saying. Here. Okay, there's a lot more hair <laughs> on Cantrust as far as I'm concerned there is on Hexo. A lot more hair. You mean in a good way? Good hair? <laughs> I just got... American? Do the... <laughs> there's a lot more... Do, the, do the curtains... Uh, what? <laughs> does the curtain on American... <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, the curtains so, match You the know, curtain. I don't have to repeat it if you just speak a little louder. Oh, anyways, uh, going back to these charts in the small cap realm... Uh, not that Origin House is really small, small cap. Um, the way they're going, they're all small cap now. Well. No, just kidding. CanTrust is up 58 cents. It's actually up 48% on the day. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know what? When, when you, like, if that's not a short squeeze cover, I don't know what a short well, cover it, is. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. But it's amazing. It goes to show you that they're big. They're yeah, Ianthus recovered 17.2%, 27 cents to a buck 84. Valens Grow Works. It wasn't Valens supposed to report earnings today? Let's take a quick look here. Valens Grow Works up 45 cents or 6%. Uh, no, Valens Grow Works. Oh, there's a call to discuss the quarter Wednesday. Okay, so they're reporting later this week or later next week, one of the two. So Valens is not reporting today. Um, I have a good feeling about Valens. You do? About, yeah. I have a feeling that they're not going to disappoint. Um, but now looking at the CSE, shall we? Metafarm uh, is up 10%, 37 cents to $4.23. Oxley Cannabis is flat at 73 cents. These are ordered in uh, by range of uh, largest market cap to smallest, or no, yeah, largest market weighting to smallest market weighting. Pharmacy Yellow added 5.36%, up 21 cents to 413. Valens Grow Works up 16%. To 324. Uh, N Wave Corporation, the dryer of cannabis, up 3%. Flower Corporation, up 0.49%. Let's see who the biggest gainer was in the CSE. It was Valens Grow Works, up 45 cents to 324. Uh, boy, okay, so tomorrow, Steve White is going to be here from Harvest Health and Recreation. As well, we're going to have Aurelian Usechi from Relivium Technologies. 
and maybe some more surprises. So, uh, surprise, 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 surprise. Oh, and special guest tomorrow, Alan Brockstein is back for the first time. And oh, I don't think we've seen him in months. Um, so we're looking forward to hear what Alan's looking at, and we'll be joining him via Skype. Ed, any final words of yeah, wisdom? Yeah, the S&P knocking on the, the 3,000 uh, handle, and that doesn't happen m m at, m often. It, did, it happened a couple times this year, gets around to that 3025 level, and then it, it fell off, and it, it drops quite a bit. We're up 140 points from the bottom here in, in about a week and a half in, in the S&P. Hmm. We're knocking on new high territory sometime this week, it looks like. And do you think that's associated with the uh, mini trade deal well, arrived yeah. at you, over you know, the You know, the banks apparently are starting to show some good results. In fact, Warren Buffett, who's a major shareholder of Bank America, is, spe is seeking special dispensation from the Fed to increase his interest in uh, to over 10 percent of Bank America. Really? Yeah. This guy owns so much it's mind-boggling. Like he owns a lot of a lot of companies, great companies. So he's got a long-term uh, investment. Yeah, and for a guy that's 85, I mean, how, how long-term can you get? I mean, no wonder what his plan is for all that, to give it away? <sighs> Who cares? He's well, probably he's thinking, certain. what's the difference? <laughs> what's, uh, what am I going to need it for? Well, he's doing the best he can. I mean, he, 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 he he's puts not his freeze. money where his mouth is. He, he, he lives in a modest house in, in Omaha. He, he, he's, he's not... Sorry, uh, what was that there, Donald? Oh, he's got a lot in Bill Clinton's charity, Donald says. Well, anyways, uh, there's our show for this Tuesday post Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with all of our guests. And thank you very much for watching. We'll see you then.